Hey, g'day guys. It's Calvin from the Cartoon Company in New Zealand. So you've got a link to you and you want to set it up better, we want to learn more about it, you're in the right spot. Today I've got some data and a tune from a young guy in Oregon, S14 Sylvia, 1UZFE, NA. He's been setting it up himself. There's been a bit of seat of the pants tuning, which I'm not a fan of. He's slowly getting there and working his way through it. Hopefully we'll have sorted the battery voltage issue to the ECU very soon. And he can get on with setting up the rest of it. Today we're actually going to look at the map compare. And this is a really cool function in the Link ECU which allows you to look at other maps, changes you've made, differences between maps. Hey, there's lots of pitfalls and traps which I'll give an example throughout the video. I've got an S14 Sylvia that I set up myself, and I'll give you a couple of examples of why those maps don't compare. Not worth changing, not worth comparing. However, I've also got one of Brian's older tunes, so I can use that to look at what changes have been made and explain a few things. Somewhere through this, I'll splash in a couple of photos of the car, this is about uh, Brian setting up his own link, learning to tune. And we'll move on to the more of the logging, which is where this came from. But without some of these base ideas, without these base concepts, logging becomes a lot trickier. So it's good to know the basics and work through the basics of the car itself. So let's get into it and see what we can come up with. Okay, so I've got the link software open. And I've got the tuning map loaded. And this is the most recent tuning map. And say we want to have a look at, a, at the changes we've made to a map, or the differences between your mate's tune and your tune. We can look at it and use the compare function to have a bit of a look. Now I'm in here at the fuel main. And you'll see here there's a, a master trim. Um, normally, I try to head for a 0% a trim. However, it's really handy having that function if you go to a track day, you go out and pretty much across the range, just because of atmospheric conditions, it's a bit rich or a bit lean. So you can pop some fuel in or pull fuel out using that one right there. Okay, so if we go up to file and we do compare push compare and I'm going to put in Brian's last tune right here and so that will bring up another set of numbers and they're in yellow so there's the old one and there's the new one now we'll see over here you can see the master fuel has changed from 35 to 16. There's also a difference in fuel trim, 15 to 7. We'll have a look at the main tuning map. So there's the main tuning map. Here's a graphical version of the tuning map. And you'll see there's this big lump in the middle of the map, which kind of looks a little bit funny. But the reason for that is it has got the boost numbers in here. So we only go to this point here, to 100, oh, sorry, zero, which is atmosphere. That is um, atmospheric pressure. And you'll see most of these numbers have approximately doubled. So we've gone from, say, at 5,000, at zero, from 36 to 71. So that's pretty much doubled. And in the master fuel, it's gone from 35 to 16. It's greater than halved, but that's changed the tune, of course. So you can have different master fuels relating to different numbers on the map and result in the same fueling of the engine. The thing I wanted to check in here was in the analog inputs that the map sensor had been changed. So this was originally running a 
LS1, sorry, it was running a one bar Bosch sensor, but the calibration file was a Bosch 1.15. So the tune wouldn't have been quite right. And if they ever changed a map sensor to a different kind, it would have caused issues. So he's recalibrated the map sensor to the correct one and got a, a calibration that works. I do have a video on calibrating the map sensor and I had the same issue where I had an LS1 or a one bar Bosch sensor and I swapped to the Bosch 1.15. So I had to put numbers in and it was on a G4 platform which didn't have this calibration in the folder. In this configuration screen right here, there's also this very helpful help browser and it tells you a little bit about where you clicked on on here. So I'm on master fuel here and it has a bit of a blurb and it explains that master fuel is the pulse width when the tuning map is at 100 and the manifold pressure it is at 100 kPa. Absolute. Therefore, so that's uh, again, that's um, sea level, um, no pressure, no vacuum. So it will generate a number of 100 in the fuel map. So here's the fuel map. Oh, no, we'll just click this little arrow here, go back to the fuel map. So down here, so in this zone here, at 100, this is in manifold gauge, not map. So the map is at 100 right here. When those figures are at 100, 16 milliseconds of injector duration is generated solely from the, from the tuning map. Engine protection looks like it's changed. See, it's over here, it's in red. RPM table. And it's changed from 6.8 to 7,000. Single table. It's got no difference in um, rev limit for different temperatures. Just a straight single, single number for rev limit. Auxiliary outputs have changed. There's an auction sensor being added. I don't think he's running an auction sensor because he's put a wideband in it, so that could possibly be turned off now. We've got ignitions changed as well. Where am I? Just go to the tuning. I'm going to bring up that ignition map. And I haven't set myself up the same table with a tuning map at the moment for ignition, for solely for ignition. So this is actually a, a, a graphical version of the fuel map. There's the ignition map. But if we look at the actual individual numbers, we can see the numbers were at 40 here, and they're down to 33, 32s down to 29s, 30s down to 25s. Now the numbers before were extremely high. Not at all what I'd expect. However, there's a possible reason for that. And we're working on it at the moment. Brian went to set his base timing and working through and following my instructions because his numbers are different to mine. Now I'm just going to go here, I'm just going to close that compare for a moment. There's his timing map, we'll have a look at that again, there's the, the view of it. So that's the present, oh wait a minute, wrong button, back to the grid. So these bottom numbers now are about right and it's getting closer to what I would expect. However, Let's do a compare on one of my tunes. Just got to find it. So I'm choosing a tuning map from an S14 
with the one New Zealander. And you'll see here, there's the differences. So I've got a little bit less timing in this area here. I've actually put a little bit more at the top end. However, let's have a look. I'm just going to go to configuration. We're going to go down here. And there are some other differences you've got to be careful when doing map compare, okay, because of, say, different zones. Going to the triggers, and you'll see here, both of these cars run individual coils. Both of these cars are a non-VVTI, 1UZ. So the trigger setup should actually be the same. Brian's are set to multi-tooth. I'm set to 1UZFE. So mine's just the default 1UZFE, which is in the link software. Trig 1, Reluctor. Both got 12 teeth, both on the crank. I'm set on low level on the filtering. He's on level 2. So there's some differences there. Trig 2, cam pulse times 1. So they're both the same. But let's have a look at this calibrate. So our reference timing on both of them is set at 10 degrees. However, our trigger offsets are very, very different. This is a negative 355. This is a 355. I've checked my base timing. Brian is still working on his because it looks like his crank pulley's off a little bit. So he may have a crank pulley issue or something. Something's not quite right there. I don't think the cam time is incorrect. I think it's something else that's going on. Now, I wouldn't recommend running a car until this base timing has been checked. You tell the computer, hey, I'm, I want 10 degrees realized. So I want it actually to read 10 degrees. And then you change this figure until it actually does have 10 degrees. The computer doesn't actually know where the timing is until you tell it. And if you don't give it the right information, you will have issues. And this may explain why our two ignition tables are very, very different. Let's see what else we can look at in this compare. I've just quickly come into the statistics, very, very quickly. And looking at the duty cycle, my maximum duty cycle of the Sylvia that I've done, 85% duty cycle. That's on the same injectors. This one's at 94. So we might want to look at the mixture readings between the two. I do know that this one is a little bit rich. But until we've solved the battery voltage problem, probably not worth considering uh, any changes there. And temperature. IATs, similar intakes, 68 and 68, so very similar. The ECU in this one is actually mounted on the tunnel. So it's at 75 degrees, still within the safe zone. 52 for Brian's, his must be tucked up under the dash a bit more. 15.23 volts on the alternator. And that's something that I've put on the monitor because it's I normally don't like it over 15. But we will keep an eye on that one. This one had only run for a very short time. So um, I'd been clearing it each day on the track day that I was doing the, the tuning on on that particular time. Brian doesn't have an idle speed where this one does. Now, we'll look at the fuel map. Oh, so in this one too, when we go into here, so we've gone into the, into the master fuel, and they're tuned in different ways. This one is on traditional. The one I did was one modelled. Okay, as you can see, Map Compare is a really, really powerful tool. So, so handy. If you've been running through the day and you go, hey, I'm not sure what's different or what I've changed, you can see the progression. Compare the two different maps. It's a really, really neat tool to have. So I hope that's been helpful, and we'll talk to you again soon.
Catch you later.